how's it going? Yeah, pretty good. What do we got? We got uh, five tops, 1967 Pete Rose baseball cards here, mint condition. And you got five Mona Lisas too? I'm dead, don't I wish. <laughs> I don't really know too much about Pete Rose the baseball player. I'm a fan of Pete Rose the gambler. Yeah. Well, I used to be a big collector of baseball cards, and I don't collect any longer. I've got five of these 1967 Pete Rose baseball cards. They're in, like, mint condition. They've got to be worth some money. Pete Rose was the man. Too bad he screwed up. I mean, he definitely would have gone down as one of the best baseball players that ever lived. Oh, yeah, he is. Fortunately, he's in that shoeless Joe Jackson club that no one likes to be in. <laughs> When he was playing, he was one of the greats. I realize he's been banned, but I just I just still think they're really fabulous, neat cards. They're, they're Pete Roses. So how'd you come across these, man? I was cleaning out the garage and stumbled across them. What do you know about them? They're authentic cards. They're labeled Tops 430. The little cartoon shows him hitting one out of the park there. It's got all of his stats for the year. No tears, no marks. You have any idea what these are worth? No, I did do a little checking online. They should be worth about 50 bucks a piece, so it's about two and a half. All right. Before I buy these, I got to know that they're legit. And these things look like they're in great shape, maybe a little too good a shape. My concerns are that, that they're in, like, almost too perfect shape and that you got five of them. I'm just not willing to take the risk of buying counterfeit cards. I just don't know enough about them to buy them. Well, they're not counterfeit. They've been sitting in my garage for years. Well, there's always a shot. Let me call my dad over and see what he knows about them. Hey, okay. Pops. This guy's got five Pete Rose cards. I forgot I'd let you look at them. Seeing as how you don't trust me with anything. Yeah, Pete Rose was the, he was the man back in the day. Won three World Series, over 4,000 hits. Uh, on the All-Star team 17 times. So what do you want to know about these? If they're real? I'd be willing to bet on Pete Rose's reputation these cards are real. No. How do you, how can you tell that? What do you, what do you mean? Because the color's all faded. Everything's a blur, even his face. It doesn't look silk screened. Oh, they're printed with an inkjet printer. And the picture looks overexposed. They probably scanned it and reprinted it. It's, it's just not right at all. They've been in my garage for years. I mean, that's, they're well, good. They've been faking baseball cards forever. People come in here all the time and think just because they've had an item for years, it's real. No, what it means is years ago, they bought a fake. And another suspect thing is all of a sudden you have five of them that are just perfect. These were bubblegum cards, so they were in a pack with bubblegum. Yeah. Okay, and, and they're not like baseball cards today that come in a nice, neat box where nothing screwed up. Yeah. These were old baseball cards that were just thrown out on the candy shelf. Kids would open them up. So it's really, really rare to find one in good shape. These things right here, I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch them at all. They look completely fake to me. I think you're wrong, but all right. I'll get something someplace else for them. Okay, um, thanks. Thanks for coming in. Thanks. If these cards are fake, then you know, what else is real? Is the wife real, the dog, the cat? You know, what's real? Oh, you again. How you doing? Pretty good. What do you got for me this time? Well, I got a couple collections of these things called Wacky Packs. Um, they're like old trading cards slash stickers, and they're pretty funny. They actually have a bunch of different brands that they spoof. Oh, that's pretty cool. Let me check it out here. OK. Oh, yeah, I know these. We got uh, Head and Boulders shampoo. Yeah. I think we all know what that is. Cover Ghoul. <laughs> Something I don't want to use. Yep. Oh, here's my favorite, Jell O. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like that one too. That yeah. one's my favorite too. <laughs> I came to the pawn shop today to sell a collection of wacky ads. Wacky ads are trading cards and stickers that were popular in the late 60s, and it's rare to see a, a whole collection of them together like I have today. These are pretty cool. They came out in uh, the late 60s. They were made by Tops, and these would have been real popular when they came out. I mean, these are a play on all the most popular brands, and a lot of these products are still around. Right. You know, 50 years later. Totally. And I found that these actually at one time were more popular even than um, baseball trading cards. I bet they were, because these were fun. You could laugh at them, they could take them off, lick them, stick them, you know, put one on your buddy's locker, do whatever. You yeah. Know, just have a good time with them. Yep. There's like about a total of, I think, 356 uh, individual cards or stickers. 
To see a whole set is actually pretty cool. And then you have two whole sets. That's even cooler. Yeah. So what do you want to do with them? Um, I'd like to sell them. For how much? Well, I think a fair price might be around 1000 Um. All right, I'm going to go call my buddy Johnny down, and um, he's going to take a look at them. I, I actually don't have that much time today. I'm sorry. I was going to ask if, you know, we could try to get this done now while I'm here. Yeah, I mean, we can try. Usually, I'd call my guy in, but I do know a lot about these, so I'm going to offer you 200 bucks. Um, that's quite a difference. Would you do eight? No. I'll tell you what. This is going to be my highest offer. I think I would feel comfortable at 500 because I think no matter what, I could at least get that back out of them. I think I could live with 500. All right, uh, it's a deal. Thanks a lot. I really hope I don't come to find out someday that things worth like a bazillion dollars, but I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be happy with the 500 bucks that I got today. I have probably the world's number one Pokemon collection inside this case. Little figures, cards, and they're all Charizards, <laughs> which is the number one Pokemon guy. Okay, hold hold on one second. Here. Yes, Chump. Yeah. This guy's got Pokemon cards. Big. It's not Pokemon. It's Pokemon. OK. I'm here to sell my Pokemon collection. I got into Pokemon collecting with my sons. And eventually, they grew up and went to college. And I never did grow up. So I continued with Pokemon for the last 17 years. This is pretty cool, man. Absolutely. So Rick, you don't know about Pokemon? It's like a game like eight-year-old kids play, right? Basically, each player has a deck of 60 cards, and you battle with your Pokemon by pulling cards out of your deck and getting enough energy points so that you can attack your other player. You can win by your opponent not having any Pokemon left. It's really popular. They have whole tournaments with where 1,000 people enter, and they have Pokemon battles. OK. I really don't understand why Pokemon is such a big deal, but if something like a Beanie Baby can become worth a lot of money, maybe these can too. I just need to know a lot more. They're pretty cool. Actually, some of them can be worth a lot of money. So these go for a lot of money? Yes. What's your most expensive one? Uh, the most expensive card is probably the Pristine 10 first edition base Charizard. The card itself is considered the crown jewel of the Pokemon world. And how much is that worth? In the range of 50 to 100,000. Whoa. And yeah. people pay that for these. Yeah, especially now with the new Pokemon craze. I know you heard of the new game out. The new Pokemon game everyone's playing on their phone. Pokemon Go. No. You just walk around until you find one, and then you sling Pokeballs on it. Maybe you need an Ultra Ball. OK. So how much do you want for these things? I'm looking for right in the area of $500,000. <sighs> do you mind if I have someone look at this? That's fine. I'll be right back. It's just it's baffling. Yeah, he doesn't know what to think right now. Right. Mm -hmm. Pokemon. It seems to me the one who's going to make the decision really doesn't know what he's looking at. I'm happy that the expert is coming in to educate the fella. He's going to know what these are selling for and the future collectible value of them. I'm sort of like in a baffled cloud here. Um, <laughs> what can I do for you guys today? He's got Pokemon cards and. Pokemon. OK, so Pokemon cards. So, and he says they're worth a half a million dollars, and it just doesn't make any sense to me. Well, <laughs> there's a lot of cards here, Rick. So Pokemon started in Japan in 95. Probably about 2000 to 2002 is when it really took off. So that's why these first edition cards are really hard to find, because you still hadn't created like this large market for what it became. And Charizard's like one of the best characters in the game. He's also one of the most collectible characters in the entire Pokeverse. So. The, whoa, whoa, hold on. <laughs> the Pokeverse. The Pokeverse, the Pokemon world. Yes, sir. OK. Rated 10s, I believe there's less than 50 PSA 10s in existence. And by looking at this, there's 20% of the market sitting on your counter. I look at this collection and I just can't believe my eyes. There's pristine tens everywhere. Charizard being one of the top collectible pieces in Pokemon. I, this is a one of a kind collection. What do you think this stuff is worth? So this one here, there's only one of them in existence. There's no other grade at a 10. Beckett grades so much harsher than PSA does when it comes to giving their 10 stamp. This card could go 
30 to 40,000. Altogether, I'm estimating anywhere from 380 to 390,000 for this collection. Really? Obviously, this guy's a little upset over Steve's appraisal, but I'm absolutely blown away. The, these are really, really interesting. I mean, you actually have lots of value here, but my problem with these is if I go to sell them, I can't have any conversation about them because I know absolutely nothing. I don't even know what a Charizard does. Well, it depends on which one. Okay, all right, chum, chum. I don't, I... Rick, throw them out of offer. I'm not gonna make an offer. It's just, it's out of my skill set completely, 100%. I'm not gonna be able to sell something I don't understand whatsoever. So I'll make him an offer. Not with my money. I don't have the knowledge or expertise to sell these things. Thanks for bringing it in. Thank you. $380,000 worth of Charizard. I still don't know the difference between a Pokemon and a Charizard. Actually, Charizard is a Pokemon. No. I have a Babe Ruth baseball card. Did you say Babe Ruth candy bar? Really? I was hungry. I came down to the pawn shop today to try to sell my Babe Ruth baseball card. When I found this card, holy moly, I almost crapped my britches. I like to sell it because I would like a new car. Asking $65,000 a day, but the lower I would go, probably about 45000 Where did you get this? I found it in our shed in our backyard. You just found it in the shed? It was a lot box. It was my grandfather's. All right, um, you know, this is Babe Ruth when he was still with the Red Sox. Some people consider the best baseball player ever. I mean, if he wasn't a pitcher at the beginning of his career, he would have probably hit over a 1,000 home runs. Wow. No one knew him as a pitcher. Yeah, most people don't realize he started off as a pitcher. And most people don't realize what a great pitcher he was. I mean, literally one year of pitching, mm -hmm. his ERA was 175. Wow. What happened with Babe Ruth, I believe, is he kept on telling the owner of the Red Sox, I want to be a hitter full time. I don't want to pitch. I don't want to pitch. And it eventually ended up going to the Yankees. It's got to be the dumbest trade in baseball history. You know what? That's why they didn't win the World Series for a very long time. It was the curse of the Bambino. Babe Ruth is one of the guys who made baseball America's favorite pastime. His record of 60 homers in a season took over 30 years to break. And his lifetime home run record took even longer. Baseball cards like this uh, were generally sold in cigarette packs. Back in the day, major stars used to endorse cigarettes. Nowadays, they don't do that. <laughs> now, this one, I find it a little weird that it's got a newspaper advertisement on the back of it. Do you have an idea what you wanted for it? $65,000. $65,000. This is the big thing with a Babe Ruth baseball card. Right. They've been faking these things since the 40s and the right. 50s. They've always been worth money, so they've always been faked. So I'm not going to say it's real until I have someone else look at it. That sounds awesome to me. If it's real, you hit a jackpot. It's extremely rare for authentic Babe Ruth memorabilia to walk into the store. This could be an absolute jackpot, but 65 grand is way too much to risk without getting it checked out first. Tom, oh, how you doing? Doing good, man. What do we have? The Great Bambino. We got an old Babe Ruth card, man. You got to be kidding. This is just awesome. I own Ultimate Sports Cards and memorabilia here in Las Vegas. The guys call me down to the shop anytime a card comes in the shop that they need some help with. In baseball, there's no name bigger than Babe Ruth. By the time he was 19, he signed a minor league contract. The problem was, since he wasn't 21, the uh, owner of the minor league organization had to take custody of him so he could sign the contract. Then his teammates kind of teased him, saying, hey, that's Jack's newest babe, and that's how the name Babe Ruth came to be. That's cool. Then after that, that's when the dumbest move in sports history happened, when he got sold to the Yankees. It's been over 90 years, and I'm telling you, Red Sox fans are still pissed off that the best <laughs> player in the sport was dealt to finance a Broadway play to a rival, especially. To finance a Broadway play? Yeah, the owner of the Red Sox had, I guess, another interest aside from the sport, and it's known as the dumbest move ever to happen in sports. But Babe Ruth items, especially from his playing days, these are pretty much one of the only guarantees in sports memorabilia that always go up. Babe Ruth items, they appeal to any collector. His name is just so important with sports in general, it's an absolute must-have for any sports fan. What you have here is one of Ruth's earliest cards, and it's the very first ever feature him in his Major League uniform. This is a top five must-have for any serious collector. What this is, the Sporting News, they basically had two 200-card sets that were distributed in their publications every week. On this one, we have the Tribune advertisement, which, of the two Babe Ruths, this one's the more preferred one. Last time I checked, there might have been maybe 40 or 50 of these known to exist. The highest-graded example of this I saw sell for over $200,000 not too long ago. So is it real? We're gonna find out right now, man. All right. Let's start with condition. It's not mint, but it's not bad. 
The corners and the edges are actually quite nice. And what's amazing about it, the centering is almost dead on. What we're looking for is we need to analyze the paper stock and just overall feel and texture. Now, as far as value on this, nothing. What we have here is not a real card. The whole texture is off, the coating on the surface, and especially the printing. Even though the technology was pretty weak back then, it was a lot more clear than what it appears on the Babe Ruth card here. So this is without a doubt a reprint. Ah, Yeah, fortunately you don't uh, have a winning lottery ticket here, man. It is what it is. Yeah, sorry, man. Hey, well, thanks, man. Hey, you got it, Rick. Later, John. Well, see you later, man. These days, fake cards are actually more prevalent than ever just because the technology and the means to print them are so available. But that's the nature of the game. Well, it's a bad day now. Sorry, man. Well, have a good one, though. You too. $65,000, that close, but no cigar. You know, I'm just disappointed. What do we have here? I got the original first series, Garbage Pail Kids. Almost 30 years old. All right. Hey, Rick. You ever seen these? He looked like a garbage pill kid. You ought to know about him. Came to the pawn shop today to try and sell my garbage pail kids. They've been in my old bedroom at my parents' house. They're not doing me really any good at this point other than a good laugh here and there. So I think if I can get something out of it, it'd be nice. So do you know much about them? Uh, 82 cards total for the first series. Came out in the early 80s, like 84. Kind of a spoof on the Cabbage Patch doll. Came in little packs, just like baseball cards. These are actually stickers, not just trading cards. So most people back in the day probably took them off and stuck them to something. So why does each character have two names? I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I have no idea. If you look at some of the characters and things like that, I mean, it's absolutely hilarious that they got kid with a bunch of pimples on his face, calling him Crater Chris. Virus Iris, OK. <laughs> Sicky Vicky. My favorite was always Graffiti Petey, because he's tagging everywhere. <laughs> this is a really cool flashback to 1980s culture. But since they were mass produced to be collectible, I don't know if there's a ton of value here. But who knows? The nostalgia factor might make these the next big collectible. There's a couple of these cards online going for three, 400 bucks a card. Whoa, whoa, they're asking or getting? No, I, I asking, asking, Okay. Yeah, yeah. asking. Because you yeah. can ask yeah. anything yeah, you right, want. Right. Yeah, you're right, you're right, yeah. I have no idea what they're worth. <laughs> I don't know if the first edition is worth more. I mean, things are weird out there. Sometimes, like, the third or fourth is worth more right, money. Right, um, right, I got a buddy right down the street who owns a vintage toy shop. Cool. Uh, let me give him a call and see if he knows anything about them. All right, yeah, okay. that'd be great. Thanks, I appreciate it. All right, I'll be right back. All right, thank you. I'm happy that somebody's going to actually come in and give their expert opinion. And I think that they're going to actually realize that they're worth something. What's happening, Johnny? Hey, what's up, guys? The guys usually call me down to the pawn shop to either get uh, a second opinion on a piece or they want to put a value on something. Garbage Pot Kids came out in the mid-'80s. They were basically a parody of Cabbage Patch Kids. So they made fun of everything. Yeah, there was no line that wasn't crossed with Garbage Pot Kids. They went up to about 15 series, but definitely the, the more sought after series one okay. by far. Why do the Garbage Pill Kids have two different names per card? Well, just two different series, an A series and a, and a B series. That's a pretty good marketing trick. Just change the name and it's a new card. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. As soon as those were released, I mean, I was a big fan from day one. I mean, I was, you know, going through the, the couches, picking up quarters to go to the, the store to go buy more packs. And they're funny, too. They're really funny cards. All right, so people collect these things? Yeah, definitely. A lot of stuff from the 80s is really hot right now. I mean, you can find them. The hard thing to find them is to find them clean. Kids holding them around with their dirty hands, you'll lose that white around the edges of, of the cards. You know, these tend to get beat a lot more than anything else. But these look in really good shape. OK. You got a complete Series 1 set here. You got the A and B. And you also have some extras. So I would put a price on the book for about 450 to 500 for the book. All right. Um, I had no clue. Thanks, man. All You're right. the best. No problem. The corners were crisp. They were nice and white, the way you want to see them. It was definitely a pretty nice collection. So how much you want for these? I was thinking maybe a couple hundred bucks. I, I believe there's a limited market on this. Um, I'll give you 150 bucks. Something tells me you're going to be able to unload these to somebody. 175? How about 150 bucks? 
Not 175, won't go any higher? I don't think they're gonna sell that easy. I, I'm not gonna go up anymore, I'm really not. So 150 is the best you're gonna do? Yeah. I'll do 150 with you. Okay, it's a deal. All right. All right, you wanna run them up, Chum? I would have liked to have gotten a little bit more, but it was money that I didn't come in with, so I'm gonna go have a little bit of fun.